we're going to use our fingers to straighten our wick. So we've got our first dip, okay? The candle was such an ubiquitous part of a day-to-day -day life in the 18th century. This is a first for me to learn about the candle making. What was wonderful about this particular workshop was the incredible detail and depth that our presenter went into. It was wonderful. This is something we could do with school children. And so what you're going to do is set your pen down again on your sacrificial notebook cover and just use the um, your pen knife to cut it square. Yeah. Last group did great. A lot of really good pens. People were writing right off the bat. One dip, I was able to write to 40 with every letter clear, and then now I'm writing the silly things misspelled. You're going to repeat it again. You're going to stick the, this needle in through. You've got to separate them a little bit. You're going to come from the, this side up back here, and from front to back. The vast majority of women's shoes the upper, the top of the shoe, is not made of leather. Women's shoemakers, one of the other names for them in the 18th century, is silk and stuff makers. I'm talking about the trade of uh, shoemaking, how to talk about it, but also preparing uh, these individuals who are volunteers at museums, um, giving them the tools to talk about uh, shoes, and, and kind of the importance of the trade of shoemaking in the 18th century. Crossroads of the American Revolution National Heritage Area is thrilled to be able to bring workshops to our heritage partners here in New Jersey as they plan for the 250th of the American Revolution in 2026. We're pleased to be able to work with East Jersey Old Town, one of our gateway sites here in Piscataway, New Jersey, as they work on living history from the Revolutionary War period. We're saving the past. Uh, all the presenters here, all the demonstrators use primary documents that they've gathered for years or weeks or months and they present the information based on the actual experiences of the doctors or the cooks or the soldiers or the generals and it's important because it preserves history. It shows us where we've come from and how far we've come in so many ways. Sixty participants spent the day at the Art of Period Trades and Crafts learning about food safety. When somebody coughs, when somebody sneezes, you have food on display on a table that you are presenting to the public. This is what's going through. Look at all that staff. Should anybody eat the food? Absolutely not. Learning when a reenactment makes sense. Shooting a musket uh, or teaching somebody how to shoot a musket without a historical military context is uh, basically, it's just a party trick. Why are you doing the demo? How are you doing the demo? Is it illustrating something larger about what took place at your site? And getting an appreciation of just how different modern day medicine is from 18th century medical and surgical procedures. It would be bleed, whether it's the arm, whether it's a, a place where there's pain, then there's purge, usually given by medicine, jollop, rhubarb, uh, and then it's vomit. Any doctor had to protect the brain. The anatomists of the 17th century and most doctors who were well educated knew the skull was just a case. The more details that come together like the proper hat and the size and the way it looked and the coat, the way it fits, these details are important. And when everything excites all the senses, when people can see things, when people can touch things, when people can smell things, and people use their ears, of course, to hear about the past, that's when it all comes together. So that's why the preparation is so important, because that's the way to prepare for the audience, the visitors, when they come to your site or your talk or your presentation. Hey!